Welcome to Instruments Direct. Today's tech review is APG. Welcome Brian Ritchie from APG. Hi Brian. Hi Brian, how are you? Tell us a little bit about APG and what you do. Sure, uh, APG has been around for about 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, based out of Logan, Utah, and started off as a company that made ultrasonic level transmitters okay. for the ag market. Okay. Today we have a full breadth of portfolio for a level pressure and flow and I cover most of the East Coast for APG. That's great, that's great. And today we're going to talk about what, submersible level sensors? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And that is the new, what, or not the new, but the PT500 series there? Correct. And uh, so tell us, how does a submersible level sensor work first off? Sure, basically it's really simple. It's um, very little setup involved. Mm -hmm. It just goes to the bottom of a well okay. or a tank and it will give you a 4 to 20 or Modbus signal based on the level. So what does that have, like a diaphragm on the end of that? Absolutely, and uh, so it's a pressure sensor that really works on hydros hydrostatic pressure. Gotcha, and so we put that on the bottom of a, a tank or a well, and then we have a cable that goes up to the surface, and of course it has some kind of output. What kind of output signal would it have? Sure, 4 to 20 or Modbus. 4 to 20 or Modbus. Modbus is becoming a very popular communication again anytime you have a PLC or networking or a data acquisition system there. I see you have some in different sizes there. Is that just for different applications then? Absolutely. Um, they, um, we do have a, a newer model as well mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, really for water well applications. So well, that's a lot smaller diameter then. Correct. So it's that's easy to drop down the well. Exactly. That's great there. So in, in an application like that, I'm just thinking a well application can have a lot of cable. It could be 200 feet or more or something like that. So you have the sensor and the cable goes to the surface there. How do you, how do you actually cost out or quote out something like that? What are the information that you need to, to put a, a, something together like that? That's a good question. Basically, you'll need to know is the depth, the depth that you'll okay. have in inches of water, which you can uh, translate, convert into PSI, okay. okay? And then obviously the amount of cable that you'll want to run up uh, to the surface. Gotcha there. And so then that'll be in the well, the output will be in the top of the surface, and then you could have a local display or remote display or again, uh, send it out to a communication system then. Well, uh, with the water situation, the well applications I'm sure are very popular right now around the country there, especially more so on the west coast as well. Uh, we do see a lot of wastewater applications using this type of technology. So you mentioned before that these are clean liquid uh, sensors. What do you do for a dirty application? Sure. So for example, um, we, we do manufacture one with, with a cage as well. Okay. And uh, that'll protect the diaphragm. It keeps the solids out of the diaphragm then? Okay. And I could also weight it down to the bottom of the tank as well. as. I did see one recently with a uh, standpipe installation. Is that just for stability to keep it from rattling around inside of a well? Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times it's for uh, applications where the, the water is, uh, it's not uh, laminar. Laminar. And then you did mention before there, make sure you keep it away from any mixers or anything like that. And that yes. could be a problem. You cut some cable off there and you've got a nice uh, boat anchor there, don't you? Yes, that can happen. Now, what about applications that you have, uh, say, chemical applications? Don't you have material compatibility issues then? What do you do? Yeah, absolutely. These are really good uh, from a chemical standpoint because you've got Delrin for the cap here. You've got 316L, and then uh, you've got three choices for uh, uh, the cable, uh, PVC, polyurethane, and hydrel. And usually right. for a lot of the aggressive ones, people will choose hydro, but you'll have to check to see if That's, it works for your application. Yeah. In most cases there we're concerned about the sensor, but we don't really think about the cable. The cable's in the liquid as well. It is. Well, that's great. Well, we've learned something new today about submersible pressure transducers from APG. Brian, thank you very much for visiting us today. If you'd like to learn more information about submersible pressure transducers, we'll have some information after this video and some links to some websites. So can answer all those questions. Again, this has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct's Tech Review. Thank you very much for attending today. Thank you.